Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another webinar arranged by Vestex Chartered Accountants. Uh, we're just going to wait a few minutes for everybody to join in, and then we'll start. All right, uh, welcome again, everyone, for those who have currently joined. Uh, this is an other uh, awareness session on corporate tax regime. As we all know that at the starting of this month, the government, they published another uh, decree law regarding corporate tax that clarified a lot of the things that were in gray area previously. And it also indicated that there will be progressions that will continue to be made in the future regarding corporate tax. Uh, but one thing is for sure that um, right now it is the time to actually start thinking about taking actions regarding corporate tax, to talk about what is required, and to take the preliminary actions that will help in initiating the corporate tax regime, how the businesses, they can register for it, how they need to prepare for registration, and then moving on towards the filing process. Um, we are going to uh, discuss uh, in a very brief and summarized way, we have prepared uh, certain points that are based on the 60 page document that was shared by the government. But these points, they have the essence of the complete document and a lot of things they will be clarified in this session. So I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Hasi, who's going to talk in detail about this regime. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, Maham, uh, for a brief uh, introduction about the corporate tax and how um, uh, it is going to impact the businesses in UAE. Now, uh, we already have done a few corporate tax sessions and some detailed sessions as well. Now, the purpose of this session is more about what we need to do as a business in UAE. Initially, we will uh, briefly go about all the details that have been issued, that have been published in the corporate tax law. So we have 18 points, that is the whole essence of the corporate tax. Uh, definitely, we cannot go into detail about the each point, however, uh, we will briefly touch and we have tried to summarize the crux of the entire corporate tax law. So we will start with, uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the summary of the corporate 
tax. We all know that it is going to be uh, implemented from June 2023 onwards. And uh, registrations for corporate tax, uh, registration for corporate tax will start after a month. After a month or two, but it will be implemented from for the businesses who will have financial years starting from June 2023 onwards. So, um, uh, briefly going through the point number one, uh, corporate tax shall apply to resident as well as non-resident person. Uh, it will, the flat the, the corporate tax is flat rate in UAE initially at nine percent and zero percent will apply to certain companies like qualifying free zone companies um, who are exempt from the, uh, the corporate tax. Uh, so uh, uh, some of the entities that are exempt are uh, government entities, of course, and the entities which are dealing with natural and non-natural resources, basically those are the oil and gas industries. Uh, so the businesses who are dealing in oil and gas industry or the natural resources industry directly or indirectly, they are exempt from corporate tax as they are already, uh, there's already state level tax applied on such companies. Uh, dividends. Uh, means profits from the companies shall also be exempt. Participating interest means holding stocks of different companies. Uh, income from form, foreign permanent establishment and non-resident person who are uh, into marine business, aircraft or like uh, sea transportation business. Uh, I would uh, briefly describe about the participating interest and the permanent establishments because in corporate tax, the concept permanent establishment is very important. So if I summarize the entire corporate tax, uh, we can say that corporate tax will apply to permanent establishments in UAE and from the state sourced incomes. So these two words, you will be hearing quite a lot in coming days, uh, of course, when this co corporate tax regime is coming in UAE. So state sourced income, if uh, I describe in easy words, means that any income that is derived directly from business in UAE. And permanent establishment, in easy words, means having an office, factory, workshop in UAE. So that will be considered as a permanent establishment. Also, uh, initially, we uh, we were hearing some rumors that real estate will be exempt, but uh, contrary to those suggestions, FPS law have clarified that real estate is not exempt, so any income, the companies who are dealing with real estate will also be subject to corporate tax. Now, uh, qualifying free zones, they will be uh, taxable at 0%. So what are qualifying free zones? Qualifying free zones are companies which have adequate substance in UAE. What is meant by adequate substance is that they have presence in UAE. They are not in UAE just for the sake of avoiding taxes. It means that they have office, they have employees, and they are doing business not with mainland companies. All their business is outside UAE. They are maybe buying from uh, a non-UAE country and to a non-UAE country. Uh, however, uh, there could be some certain circumstances where qualifying free zone companies can elect, may elect to be subject to corporate tax. So once they have elected voluntarily to be subject to corporate tax, so they will no longer be taxable at 0%, rather they will be taxable at 9%. And um, uh, we will also be uh, focusing of when uh, for the qualifying free zone, especially uh, on the transfer pricing rules. Now, what is transfer pricing? Is it is a concept when uh, related parties transact with each other. For example, one free zone is will be intersecting with a related party, maybe in a free zone or a mainland, but that transaction should be. Uh, 
subject to transfer pricing and transfer pricing rules will apply to transactions between related parties. So uh, to briefly describe that, I would say that those transactions should be at market value. The intention should be actual business. So the, for example, if uh, being a uh, qualifying free zone, uh, if I am purchasing some services or material from my related party, the intention should not be to book my expense. The intention should be the actual business. It should not be that I am showing that, okay, I am purchasing from my uh, a company and to lower my profit. So all the transactions should be uh, at arm's length or uh, transfer pricing or in easy word market uh at market value uh, and of course uh, this is not just a verbal saying that okay we are doing transfer pricing there is a, a complete detailed document and uh, documentation and rules that need to be followed to prove that uh, these trans uh, these transactions actually followed uh, transfer pricing uh, we expect ft auditors uh, to uh, more alert than there are related party transactions and they are definitely going to investigate uh, about the documents and supporting documents so for the uh, transactions between the related parties. So uh, that is the reason I am focusing more on transaction between the related parties, especially the ones are, that are based in a free zone to uh, understand uh, the principles and the rules for transfer pricing. So whenever they are, they, are, they should have a proper set of documents and records for this for these transactions. Now, uh, uh, moving further, uh, grouping of uh, because uh, VAT, we know that uh, if the audience, uh, the, the people in the audience, they know that there are VAT group allowed. Such groups are also allowed to be formed in corporate tax as well. Uh, but as long as these are all the mainland companies, free zone company uh, are not to be allowed to form a corporate tax group uh, until or unless of course that free zone company is also subject or elects to be taxed at 9%. Uh, tax group for corporate tax purpose are uh, will be considered as one unit. So all the transactions in between the group, they will be eliminated or um, uh, when sub submitting corporate tax returns. So intra group uh, transactions uh, will be eliminated a forming tax group or corporate tax purpose definitely have uh, certain benefits and uh, disadvantages as well. Uh, benefits, of course, uh, with regards to the intra group, the group uh, transactions and disadvantage, we can say that uh, if one company is not uh, complying, uh, this will have severely and jointly impact on the entire group. So uh, that is that can be considered as a disadvantage if there are non-compliance uh, issues. To form tax group, of course, the, uh, there are certain conditions. Not everyone, uh, every company can form a tax group with uh, with other companies. Uh, uh, one company should own more than seventy-five percent in another company. So the owner should ownership should be common uh, above. 75% of the shares in all the companies and uh, that uh, financial statements are prepared in the same financial year. So all the companies should have single financial year. So for example, if one company has January to December, the other company should also have January to December financial year. Uh, of course, uh, those, uh, that financial year needs to be as per international financial reporting standards. Uh, IFRS and also for the uh, purpose of corporate tax, the accounting profits, unrealized gain losses can be considered on cash basis only. So means that whenever they are occurred, whenever they are realized, uh, like for example, on cash basis, uh, that can be uh, subtracted from the uh, profits that can be adjusted or like subtracted or added into the profits. Uh, uh, Again, uh, one of the, the point for tax group that if the asset or liability is transferred within the companies in the tax group, they will be 
uh, there will be no gain or loss to be computed in such transactions. Uh, of course, the, uh, the, there are certain conditions to that as well, that the taxable persons are juridical persons, they are legal persons with permanent establishment in UAE. And one has more than 75% or more interest uh, in the other. Uh, so, of course, they will, they will be a group, then all the transfers uh, of the assets and liabilities within the group that will be, uh, um, will be exempt from uh, or out of scope for the corporate tax purpose. Uh, no gain or loss will be computed on business restructuring. Uh, for example, if we are changing the ownership or we are restructuring the business, so there is uh, relief for that, that no gain loss will be uh, computed on such transactions. Uh, now, uh, corporate tax has limited the interest deduction uh, up to 30% of earnings before interest, tax, and depreciation. Uh, and remaining can be carried forward for the, tax, for the next 10 tax periods. It means that, for example, this will especially apply to maybe some owners or the investors when they invest in the business if they are charging interest on such investment to business, uh, that interest can be allowed up maximum up to 30% of the total earnings uh, 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 before interest and tax and depreciation of the business. So, uh, for example, if we have, uh, let's say, 100,000 uh, uh, dollars of uh, uh, profits, the maximum that can be allowed is 30,000 dirham in, in, in uh, interest deduction uh, if the business is paying interest. We, so we cannot say that, the, okay, the owner has invested and um, we are, uh, the business is paying interest less than 50% of the profits. So to limit that, maybe such cases may arise because uh, to avoid uh, exploiting the corporate tax law because some companies may invest uh, in the uh, may have investment from the owner and in the shape of interest, uh, uh, they might they may try to uh, uh, reduce the profits. So that is allowed only up to thirty percent of the profits. Now, entertainment expenditure. Uh, this question uh, this question has been mostly asked by many clients and uh, as well as the people uh, for uh, the people in business. Uh, this is very common question that if uh, we are having some entertainment expenditure, how much is allowed and how much is not allowed. So to clarify this, uh, up to 50% is allowed. Like for example, if we are having a business meeting or having a business event uh, that is entertainment uh, in nature, that is allowed only 50%. Up to 50% is allowed for to be deducted for corporate tax purpose. Uh, tax purpose. We cannot deduct it at 100%. And uh, one, this this point, point number thirteen is also very important, and uh, this says that any benefit to owners uh, or their related parties will not be allowed as a reduction. So uh, many uh, uh, people are uh, they, they have been asking about, for example, can we withdraw salary and then treat it as an expense? Unfortunately, if you are an owner of the company or one of the shareholder, your your profit cannot be, uh, your salaries cannot be uh, treated as deduction. Uh, the dividends, profit or salary cannot be treated as a deduction for the corporate tax purpose. Uh, purchase made by owners on behalf of the business shall be allowed to be deducted uh, on market value basis. So for example, if you are making some purchases, maybe furniture or maybe stocks or goods on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the uh, business uh, that uh, is allowed uh, uh, on market value basis. So you cannot inflate that one. Uh, uh, and also uh, uh, for transactions with related party, uh, transfer pricing methods need to be applied. I also discussed this point in our earlier uh, bullet point as well. Uh, means that uh, whatever transactions are happening with related parties, these will be uh, transfer pricing methods will be uh, applied. So we already discussed in our previous webinars uh, different transfer pricing methods. I think I'm having okay. Uh, different transfer pricing methods 
uh, we discussed uh, cost plus margin and uh, uh, net margin. There are different methods, so we will not go into details as we have already discussed transfer pricing methods. But uh, be mindful of uh, transfer pricing methods whenever there is a transaction between uh, related parties. Withholding tax shall be at zero percent. We can say that there is no uh, withholding tax and uh, foreign tax credits can be used to settle uh, corporate tax liability and cannot be uh, carried forward. It means that, uh, 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 for example, if you have paid corporate uh, tax on in a, in a foreign country, uh, that, shall, that can be deducted as a uh, tax credit in the UAE as well. Uh, but it cannot be carried forward like uh, deductions like a, like for example, uh, it cannot be carried forward. However, tax loss can be uh, carried forward, but it cannot be carried backwards. So we can adjust tax losses in future, but we cannot uh, discuss in the previous. Uh, we cannot adjust these tax losses in the uh, previous years. So, um, honourable audience, so this these were the uh, these were the crux of the entire corporate. So this is the summary of the um, uh, corporate tax law that is 60 page that was published by FDA. Uh, of course, uh, we have tried our best to summarize in, uh, in the most simplest words possible uh, all the points. However, each point uh, will definitely uh, does definitely have its own details and uh, rules and regulations. Uh, which uh, we will be discussing on periodic basis in our upcoming webinars. Uh, so these were the, uh, we can say this, these were the uh, summary of the corporate tax. Now what to do next, that is the purpose of today's webinar. Uh, first of all, of course, there is a registration requirement and then the filing of corporate tax uh, to be, uh, to clarify uh, most of the people uh, who are running prison companies. Uh, that all taxable persons, including free zones, need to are obliged to register for corporate tax and obtain a corporate tax registration number. Um, the, the FTA, or you know, there are some certain exempt uh, persons or uh, companies as well, like uh, natural resources or non natural resources, government entities, and uh, investment fund companies. Uh, authority can also demand such company to register in corporate tax as well. But to uh, to reiterate that the tax registration for corporate uh, tax purpose will be um, applied to all the companies, regardless whether they are a mainland company or a prison company. So they need to follow corporate tax compliance and requirements. And uh, the return needs to be filed uh, in nine months after the end of the uh, relevant financial year. And if there is a um, payable due for the corporate tax, that will also be uh, due to be paid the same uh, period. So this is uh, a, a timeline uh, illustration for the businesses to register for corporate tax. Now we are in 2022, and on 1st of January, uh, after 1st of January, a corporate tax registration will uh, be open and. Uh, then there are companies maybe whose financial year will be starting from 1st of June 2023. For those companies, corporate tax will be applicable from 1st June 2023 onwards, and their first uh, filing period or their first uh, uh, corporate tax period will be 31st May 2024, from June to uh, June 2023 to May 2023. And there, of course, there's the second period will be June 2024 to May 2025 and onwards. And uh, after the end of each tax period, they will have nine months to submit their uh, VAT, uh, the corporate tax returns. Now, most of the companies in UAE, they have financial year uh, on uh, starting from January to 31st December. So most of the companies, uh, for such companies, uh, the corporate tax will be applicable from January 2024 onwards. So for example, if you have a financial year, uh, January 2022 to January uh, 2020, uh, December 2020, then the next corporate, uh, the financial year will be January 2023 to December 2023. So for such companies, uh, corporate tax will be applicable for from January 2024 and onwards. 
So although they will need to register, their uh, period, uh, they will they will need to apply for registration, but uh, uh, their first uh, period will um, for corporate tax purpose will start from January 2024. Uh, uh, now, how uh, you should prepare for corporate tax? Uh, definitely, you need to uh, utilize the information uh, handed out by FTA and competent authorities. Uh, attending such webinars where uh, such awareness webinars were conducted by uh, best tech started accountants as well as other uh, reputable uh, uh, tax consultants uh, then you also need to recognize uh, maybe you need to restructure your business or maybe um, if you are not maybe following uh, financial statements requirements uh, mostly businesses they are not maintaining their accounting records as per international accounting and uh, international financial reporting standards. So they, they need to uh, be a little prepared for corporate tax. And also they need to know that which uh, date they need to register for corporate tax and uh, uh, they should prepare for the registration accordingly when their corporate tax will be applicable. For example, if you have a financial year ending on December, then for you corporate tax will be applicable from January 2024 to onwards. And also maybe some elections uh, that we are applic elections and applications that your business might need to make, uh, for example, uh, unincorporated partnerships, they may make an election to be treated as a, a taxable person. Otherwise, un unincorporated un unincorporated partnerships will be uh, not be treated as a single uh, unit. They will be. Uh, treated as an individually, all the partners will be subject to corporate tax on an individual basis. So this is just one uh, few of the examples where you need to uh, make elections and applications for different um, corporate tax rules and regulations. Uh, financial information record mandatory for your business for corporate tax businesses. This is especially for the businesses who are not maintaining their uh, accounting records, or maybe they were maintaining on Excel sheets. Or maybe they were utilizing some accounting software, but they were uh, they were they were not following uh, international accounting standards. They were encoding the data just for the sake of maintaining their sales, receivables, payables, and bills. So, so for such businesses, this is important that uh, they should have. Uh, it is recommended that to have an FTA approved uh, accounting software, which will let them maintain their accounting records uh, for, as per international accounting standards and they should also maybe if they have an in-house accountant uh, then you should be uh, instruct or advise your accountant to start preparing your financial information as per international accounting standards because uh, now onwards since this corporate tax regime is there um, you will uh, your records will be periodically submitted to the and government authorities and they they will be subject to scrutiny as well as counter questions from the authorities uh, as well so you should you, you really should be uh, concerned and uh, careful about how you are maintaining your uh, financial information uh, also such information will need to be maintained by uh, businesses for minimum period of seven years so it means that even after five six seven years uh, let, let's say if this corporate tax gets implemented on uh, January 2024 or June 2023, the authorities may even in 2029 demand the records for January 2023. So this is, these are very important for uh, some of the you know, points. These are very important to prepare yourself for corporate tax regimes. And definitely you should be uh, stay up to date with all the information that is being delivered by FTA uh, because of course, uh, this law is uh, ever, you know, it's um, uh, it's updating and evolving. Uh, new guidelines are coming from FTA. Depending on uh, rules and regulations, you should be up. You should keep yourself updated, or your finance department or the person who is handling your accounts, they should be updated with all the new regulations. So to avoid any non-compliance uh, 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 penalties or non-compliance issues. Uh, so th this was uh, it uh, for today's sessions. Now we will have some of the questions uh, that were submitted to uh, 
us by you know, the resistance. And I hope you, uh, it was an um, informative webinar uh, for the audience. And if you will have any questions, definitely you can reach out uh, to us as well. Uh, Maham, on to you. Uh, I see that we have we had some questions that were asked by uh, our audience resistance as well. Yes, uh, thank you so much for the brief but informative session, Mr. Hussein. Uh, we will first address the questions that we have received through the registration forms, and then we'll move on to the questions that we have received right now during the session. So two to three questions were uh, based on the registration process. Uh, I know we have talked about it, but if you could just touch base that when the registrations will begin and how the companies can register for the tax return. Uh, Maham, the registrations will start in a couple of months. There is no uh, confirmed date, but we expect maybe uh, in the start of January, in the start of the year 2023, the registrations will start. And for the registrations, uh, we expect that uh, FTA will definitely be requiring about last 12 months financial statements. So uh, these statements should be prepared as per international financial reporting standards. and uh, other basic documents, legal documents, uh, business nature of the, uh, the business model of the company, and uh, other business, other basic questions. These will be uh, we expect FDA to require such information. So the businesses should prepare themselves for the corporate tax registrations uh, now, so they can be uh, registered without, I mean, getting into any trouble. Right. And uh, there is one question that is a bit specific, but it is regarding the free zone companies that their company is registered in DMCC free zone for management consulting. Will it be rated 0% or 90%? Uh, Mom has already explained that qualifying free zones are only subject to 0%. So, not all, so we need to understand this qualifying free zone. Uh, qualifying free zone means that the company is having adequate substance in UAE that adequate substance as I have already uh, briefly explained that uh, uh, these are the uh, the companies who are have offices and employees in UAE they are doing business uh, in UAE they have uh, an office workshop factory and employees in UAE and they are not dealing with uh, they, they are not dealing with the mainland companies so they are either dealing with the free zone companies or they are dealing with mainland uh, non UA companies. So these will be subject to 0%. All other companies, uh, free zone companies will, will be subject to 9% if they are dealing with mainland companies and or they are not in, uh, qualifying free zones. Right. And uh, when we talk about the registration for the corporate tax, uh, for the companies that are exempted from it, for example, free zone companies or the ones that are rated at 0%, Will they have to register for the corporate tax as well? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, all the companies uh, will need to uh, register for corporate tax, regardless uh, they are a free zone company or they are mainland company. Uh, the only um, benefit or the incentive to free zone companies is that if they are a qualifying free zone company, they will be subject to 0% uh, corporate tax, which means that they need to uh, have um, uh, proper financial records, uh, proper supporting documents, especially for, uh, I, I believe that free zone companies who are qualifying free zone companies will have more compliance requirement because we know they are subject to a 0% corporate tax and they need to uh, establish to FTA as well. And FTA may at any time investigate or audit such companies and require the supporting documents on the basis of which they claimed to be a, a free zone company. So uh, definitely there is no exemption for registration to any company until or unless they are an exempt persons, which we discussed in our webinar. Uh, uh, even the non ua company may also have to register for corporate tax if they uh, if they are having a state forced income and if they have a permanent establishment in UAE. Right. 
And uh, what would be the profit X treatment for long term investment for stocks? Uh, Mom, we discussed about uh, this is more related to participating in trust section of the corporate tax means uh, participating in trusts are these share holdings which should be more than 5% in the other companies and they should be retained for a minimum period of uh, 12 months. So if these are the, there are certain conditions for participating in trusts, um, like I briefly told you, but there is a there is an entire topic for that, which will uh, uh, which will make us to go spend much time on this one. But to briefly answer your question, uh, this is related to participating in trusts, and uh, if they fulfill the criteria for the participating in trusts, uh, there shall be uh, no tax corporate tax on uh, this holding of stocks. And uh, we have received a few questions in registration and right now in the live session as well uh, to talk about the financial year that how a company can establish the financial year for corporate tax purposes. Uh, first of all, the financial year is uh, mostly mentioned in the memorandum, so you can check your memorandum of association. Or uh, if you are a prison company, you can check. Uh, your the documents provided to you by the authority there will be a document it will have financial year uh, prescribed that what is the so most of the companies they have a financial year uh, January to December uh, also if you cannot find it in your documents or memorandum then you can get your uh, you can even decide your financial year yourself as well uh, official financial year starting now onwards by getting your uh, financial statements audited for the year January 2022 to December 2022. So that will be then considered as your uh, uh, corporate uh, tax uh, financial year. Right. And uh, for the company that is registered in UAE, but they have most of their customers internationally, how corporate tax will affect them? Just to talk about it briefly. For the companies registered in free zones, having only international customers, they are most likely to uh, be a qualifying free zone. And uh, uh, for such companies, uh, the corporate tax will be zero rated, but still they will need to uh, register for corporate tax and do all the compliance requirement, like maintaining financial records, uh, etc. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Naseeb. Uh, these are all the questions that we could address right now. Um, again, we are seeing a lot of questions that are very scenario specific that would require uh, further information from the companies and, and that is where we can guide them better. Uh, our information is this contact information is displayed in front of you. You are more than welcome to reach out to us by email or call any means that you feel comfortable to discuss further about um, the applicability of corporate tax that is very uh, customized to your industry and your business specifically. It would be inconvenient right now and uh, let me have very less time to discuss about things that are custom to certain industries and businesses. So that's all for today's webinar. I would like to once again thank you all very much for taking the time out and joining our session and we will see you all next in our next webinar. Please stay posted on all of our social media platforms to know that when our next webinar will be held. Thank you very much and you all have a great day.